from the University of Florida's College of Journalism and Communications. You're watching WUFT News. This is a WUFT News update. I'm Anthony Montalto. And I'm Elizabeth Velasquez. Thank you for joining us. Tomorrow is the last day to vote in the Alachua County special election. The special election is to decide who will take over former Commissioner Gil Johnson. Early voting did end yesterday with only 9% of the county voters casting their ballots. There are five candidates up for the at-large seat on the commission, Cynthia Chestnut, Sherwin Henry, Matt Howland, Patrick Engel, and Gabe Kamowitz. Over the weekend, dozens of students and faculty members gathered Friday at the corner of UF's campus to stand up for professors' rights. Students from political clubs and faculty union members organized the event for academic freedom. Three UF professors were recently barred from being experts in a lawsuit over the state's new voting restrictions. President Fox reversed that decision. Protesters say educators and researchers should have more freedom in their outside work. I knew that, especially being a top five public university, um, that it was going to be confident in its ability to teach us. But now seeing the way that it's treating its professors, I've kind of lost that confidence. A new task force is studying UF conflict of interest policies. The three political experts have expressed doubts about the internal task force approach to resolving the issue. If you're looking to take a trip down to the Caribbean, you might not have to travel that far. WUFT Samantha Narson shows us a new chef in town and how he's changing Gainesville's culinary scene. JJ. JJ knew it since he was flipping pancakes at age 12. Blueberry pancakes, banana pancakes, anything pancakes, I'm making it. He knew how to scramble his eggs. I want to be a chef one day. Didn't know how, I, how it was really going to look, but I was like, I want to be a chef. And his brother Freed knew how to call the shots. Most importantly, they knew they loved it, and they still do. It's like a football game, like kickoff. So once mm -hmm. one o'clock hit, I just feel like I see cars rolling. I'm like, okay, here we, here we go. You know, time to. Time to buckle up, time to, hey, everybody's good, everybody's, yeah, you know, okay. Yeah. And we kind of just, just start flowing from there. As this duo complemented each other's passions, Chef JJ's Creations was formed. I feel like I'm the, I'm the coach, he's a star quarterback. While Freed craved his brother's food, his brother craved to share his craft with the community. I would make stuff and it would not taste good. I would taste his food, he's younger than me. And I'm like, you have a hang of this. They believe the growth seen for their business is connected to their family bond and their love for the community. Soon enough, the wheels started turning. Caribbean fusion what I, is, is what I kind of fell in love with, the Haitian food, Jamaican food, Bahamian food, kind of just well seasoned and just packed with flavor. With the newest edition of a food truck, Chef Gigi's Creations is driving to the rights union. If we keep growing, we're going to need more help to be able to um, create jobs within the community. The love for their cuisine and the community is constant as the impact of their business continues to grow. Samantha Narson, WUFT News. Chef JJ's oh, creations will be available at the Rights Union next semester. Anxiety not only affects humans, but our furry friends as well. WUFT's Maya Naeem introduces us to a dog owner who started noticing anxious behaviors. One-year-old miniature schnauzer Luna plays with two-year-old French bulldog Kylo. Luna's owner, Kayla Nino, noticed her dog struggled with social anxiety with other canine friends. Little by little, we started realizing that she kind of acted aggressive with dogs, but it wasn't that she was aggressive, that she just got really excited and people did not want to like play with her or like be with her. Nino thinks because her dog grew up over quarantine, it affected Luna's social behavior. We started realizing that she never, we never went on walks because we weren't allowed to. Like you said, staying inside home. So she only dealt for those like till June, July, when quarantine was kind of like cool with everybody, that we realized that she never had interaction with dogs. The Humane Society of North Central Florida is one of many pet adoption centers in Gainesville. Humane Society of North Central Florida Director of Advancement Margot DeCana believes some dogs adopted over quarantine may have increased anxiety. Some of these pets who've been home with their owners are experiencing separation anxiety as their owners are transitioning back to working from an office. Nino recognizes separation anxiety traits in Luna. When I tell her I'm like leaving, she gets her like tail goes between her legs, like very, very sad, starts kind of whining. Nino advises other pet owners with a similar experience to be tolerant with their anxious pets. Be more patient and like it takes a lot to train a dog anyways. So like if you actually truly want one, like put the effort in it. And Dakota says a helpful tip for pet separation anxiety includes sessions with a behaviorist or dog trainer. Maya Naeem, 
WUFT News. For advice on how to help your pet with separation anxiety, call the Humane Society of North Central Florida. Anthony, it's been pretty chilly the past few days. I know. I'm really, really hoping the sweater weather continues. Let's check in with Ashley Weinstein in the Weather Center. So we do have a bit of a warming trend happening this week, but don't worry that fall weather will come back before the weekend hits. Right now we have these beautiful clear skies, 70 degrees, feels like 68. It is a bit cooler right now than the average normal temperatures for this year. Look at these temperatures dropping down to 68 right now in Gainesville, 64 in Lake City and 70 in High Springs. Now let's do a little bit of a weekend rundown. So again, it's going to be warming through Thursday. If you're going to have any rain this week, the biggest possibility is for Thursday due to some onshore flow, but nothing to be too concerned about and dropping down a bit cooler again by Friday. Which brings me to my six day outlook where we see it's nice and clear this week, partly cloudy, temperatures warming as the week progresses and then dropping back down, feeling like fall again by the weekend. Now over to Parker with sports. Thank you, Ashley. Now here's your local sports news. Florida football has finally snapped their three game losing streak after defeating the Sanford Bulldogs 70 to 52 in an unexpected shootout. At the half, the Gators were trailing behind the Bulldogs 35-42, which is the most points allowed in a half in the Florida program history. But the Gators were able to rally in the second half, where Emory Jones led the way to four unanswered scores that gave the Gators a comfortable lead. Following the ugly win, head coach Dan Mullen spoke on his job security. Next up, the Missouri Tigers will host Florida this Saturday at 3 p.m. The seven-game losing streak against FSU has come to an end. As Gator men's basketball grabbed a big win over rival Florida State on Sunday with a final score of 71-55. The majority of the games died, stayed at a tightly contested pace, but, at 13, but a 13 to nothing run in the second half propelled the Gators to the win. Four of the Gators starters scored 10 or more points. On the leaderboard, we have Colin Castleton, who registered his fourth double-double, consisting of 15 points and 16 rebounds, which earned him the SEC Player of the Week award. Anthony Derugi added 15 points and seven rebounds of his own. Florida's win has earned them a spot in the top 25. In high school football, the postseason has finally arrived as local teams entered round one of the playoffs this weekend. The PK Young Blue Wave dominated Crescent City on Friday in the Class 3A Regional Quarterfinals, with the final score settling at 56-7. PK Young entered the playoff game as the number four seed and left with a win that extended their win streak to seven. The victory will send them into the next round to take on top seed Trinity Catholic in the regional semifinals. Other teams moving forward include Lincoln High, who eliminated Gainesville, and University High, who defeated Fletcher this week past weekend. The Tampa Bay Lightning are back on the ice tonight to wrap up their Game 3 homestand with a matchup against the Islanders. The Lightning are coming off of a big win this weekend by defeating the top-seeded Florida Panthers in overtime at the 2 minute and 13 second mark on the clock, settling the score at 3-2. Tampa will enter tonight's game with a 7-3 record and number 4 in the East. Game 7 is star game start is set for 7 p.m. Thanks, Parker. If you're looking for something fun and educational to do, the Florida Museum of Natural History hosted a tour of mammals at Payne's Prairie. The walk began at the Payne's Prairie Preserve Visitor Center. The program consists of small groups. This is done in order to not disturb the natural trails as well as the animals. The program has done different species in the past, such as birds, reptiles, and butterflies. Mammals are nocturnal, making it hard to be spotted during the day. Since most mammals are nocturnal, um, you really don't get a chance to see much of them walking around, but they do leave their trace. Uh, they do leave lots of clues of them um, that, you know, to show us that they were here. Kids were given plaster to create their own animal print souvenir to take home. The Payne's Prairie Walks will resume in the spring. Thanks for keeping up with WUFT News on Facebook. I'm Anthony Montalto. And I'm Elisabel Velasquez. That's our time for now, but your Florida news is always on at WUFT.org.